Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the procedure to install a Wikipedia server on a Synology NAS. So this will allow you to have offline access to Wikipedia, and offline meaning that you don't require an internet connection to access it. So this could be useful if you are in an area with spotty internet access, or if Wikipedia is slow for you during the day when there's lots of usage, you could download Wikipedia at night to your system and then serve it up to your family during the day, like if you're uh, teaching students at home. This could also be used in emergency situations, like if the internet goes down and you need to know, uh, or survival situations, you want to know like edible plants or first aid or how to tie knots, things like that. So the software I'm going to be using is Kiwix, and that's going to be installed in Docker on the Synology NAS. So you need a Synology NAS that supports Docker, and that would include, I think, every Intel model, but I'm not completely sure. But if you can install Docker on your machine, then it should support this. So the first thing we need to do is download the Wikipedia data file. So if you go to the Kiwix website, and I'll link to this in the description, you can go to Downloads and then Content. And then on the left side of this page, you'll see this Available ZIM Files. You want to go down to where it says Kiwix Wiki. Click on that. And now you get a page with a ton of wikis. So this has it broken apart by language. Um, there's different types. I think there's like a math, a medicine. Um, different Wikipedias, so they're smaller files um, uh, in these kind of like vertical columns. So I like a, a simple version, so I search the page for simple. And the one I've downloaded is this Wikipedia English. It's 443 megabytes, and it says simple, all, no pick. So simple means it has shorter articles, and no pick means it has no pictures in it. So I've already downloaded this, but I'm going to demonstrate downloading a different one. Uh, but if I, if I go up a little bit, you see this Ray Charles here. This is a 5 meg um, ZIM file. These are called ZIM files. And it's a lot smaller, but it's good for testing. So you can click download or you can do BitTorrent. The Synology NAS will support BitTorrent in the download station. So you could do that. I'm just going to download it to my browser. So I'll hit the download button. It's downloading the 5 meg. So you see here we have this Wikipedia Ray Charles. So I've already set up a folder on my server, so I called it Wikipedia Zim. So it's on this share I've created, and you can put it anywhere. You could actually just open up a share right in the Disk Station Manager and drag the file into it too. So I'll drag the Ray Charles file over there, and you can see I already have a Wikipedia uh, simple all no pick there. So now that we have a Zim file on the Synology NAS, we can go back to our browser. I'll go into the Disk Station Manager, and you want to have Docker on your machine. So you can go to Package Center, and you can search for Docker, and then you can install it. I've already installed it here, so I'll hit Open. So once you have Docker open, you want to go to Registry, and then search for a keyword called Kiwix. So it's K-I-W-I-X. I'll hit Search. You'll see this where it says Kiwix slash Kiwix Serve. So I'll select it, I'll click Download. It's gonna say Choose a Tag, it has Latest, 3.10 or dev, I'm just going to choose latest. I'll hit select. This will download it to image, so go under image now. Okay, we'll select that and we'll hit launch. You can name your container. I'll just leave the default name. You want to click on advanced settings. I'm not configuring anything on this first page, but I'll go to volume. I'll click add folder. So here you want to select the folder where you put your Zim files. So I put mine under DS share and then Wikipedia Zim. I'll select that. The mount path, I want to do forward slash data. Next, I want to click on the network tab. There's nothing to change here. Port settings, I need to give this a port. So if you look in the address bar, the port for the disk station manager is 5001. So I need to give it a port like that. So here I'll do 8080. Next, we can click on links. There's nothing to change here. And then environment, we'll go down to a command. I'll type star.zim. So this will run this start.sh space star.zim to start up the uh, Kiwix server. I'll hit apply and then I'll hit next. It's checked here where it says run this container after the wizard is finished. I'll hit apply. And now I can go up here to the container and it's up and running. So we want to open up a new web page. So I'll just add a tab. I'll paste in the disk station manager IP address and then I'll change the 5001 to 8080. Okay, so I got this error message that it can't open the page is because this isn't hosted on a HTTPS system. So I need to get rid of the S there. And now it will open up. So since I have two Zim files in there, you can see I have two instances of Wikipedia here. One is just Ray Charles, and this could be medical, math, whatever. 
And the other one is Wikipedia Simple. So if I click on Ray Charles, we can look at his songs and stuff. And then if we go back to Wikipedia Simple, we can click on that. And we have the full version of Wikipedia Simple here with no pictures, of course. And then you can click around on it. So we see uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, uh, The Lightning Thief, uh, the United States. We can click through these pages, and since they're hosted locally on the Synology NAS, they're very fast to load. And if you get bored, you can click on the little dice up here, and it'll take you to a random page. X Window System, that's actually uh, something I've done videos on. So you can click through here, random Wikipedia stuff. So since this is on a Docker, it really isn't going to take a lot of resources on your Synology NAS. You see here, it says it's taking 0.17%, 0.15% of the CPU, and 71 megabytes of RAM. So that's pretty small. If you're interested in the hardware I'm using, I'm using a DS918 Plus. I'll put a link in the description of that, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.